What's going on, Elite Test Elite Ace? We live action. You already know what it is. All right, I'm gonna um, show off my Gundam anime collection. Actually, more than just anime collection, just everything I own Gundam, you know, in general. So I'm gonna start it off with uh, the appropriate timelines in the order. First off, we have here Mobile Suit Gundam, the first series, the movie box set. It has the nice, uh, shiny, rainbowy reflection here, as you can see. Oh damn! Movie box set. Same thing on this side. Now it comes with the whole series, of course, but it's split into three movies. This is movie one with Armoro on the front and Gundam, and you know, I forget her name. Shame on me, but he's holding uh, he's holding her. Damn, what's her name? Anyway. The, um, you can see special edition so it says I like the cover art the little inside you know it has matter of fact let me take it off and show you Yoshiki Tomino hope I said his name right he is a uh, genius all the credits uh, talking about the different novels right here how everything connects Plus other things he did. This, these are all his works, you know. All right, enough of that. And we have movie two. No, that's movie three. Damn. Huh. <laughs> movie two. Soldiers of Sorrow. I'm Rowan Shar. Oh, another thing, this is completely Japanese, you know, sub, well, it has subtitles, English sub, but, you know, no dub at all. So this is a official, complete experience. And it comes with uh, this little extra manual thingamajiggy. Let's see, Beyond Generations. First, I'd like to thank you for watching such old animation works from 20 years ago. You know, he gives his, uh, his respects and everything, you know. Introduction, the movie highlights, atmospheric reentry, other extra little additional features. And see, you you have to respect first Gundam. If you're if you are a true Gundam fan, a true Gundam fan, like me. You have to respect this series. I know jumping into it, I know people are looking, probably looking at the animation or the artwork, like, ugh. But keep in mind, this came out, I bet a lot of you watching this, this came out before you were even born. So, like, expect, don't expect it to look like a brand new episode of uh, a Bleach or something or a movie animation or like Gundam Unicorn. It's, it's obvious why it looks like this, but it's appropriate for its timeline. Actually, this was ahead of its time. In an interview, Yoki Yushitongo, though, he said when this first came out, a lot of people would tell him, I don't get it, I don't get it. But this attract the audiences of high school students and college students. You know? So, and it and it didn't do all that good. It was the reruns that put Gundam out there. So, don't just think Gundam just popped off. No, it it had its downsides. But then, it uh, now, Gundam is where it is now. But, you know, I, you know, I like it. So, all right, and that is first Gundam. Now let's get on to the next series. Here we have a lot of you. I know a lot of you are familiar with this one, Mobile Suit Gundam, the O Wave Team. This one actually takes place on the first episode of this. They show. Garma giving his speech because uh, I mean uh, uh, Gara Garma Gara he gives his speech him right there he gives his speech because his brother right there dies and he's giving the speech on the first episode of this they're watching the speech so this is you know this takes place mostly on the ground I call this series Army Gunnam because it's more military based you know as you can see right here it has a reversible cover right there but I'm not gonna flip it out because the reversible cover image is right here so you can see the Zaku 
taking down a ground Gundam. They call it the, the Gundam G or G Gundam. Yeah, I know. I call it Army Gundam. You know, look at the fatigue and everything. So that's volume one. Uh, volume two, I like this cover art right here. That's the Gundam uh, dashing at you. That's the lights. That's the handout. Oh, yeah, anime guy. Tuh. Look at this. 2002. Oh, damn. That's the reversible cover. What it has the Xeon female soldier looking up in the sky. All right. Volume three. This was an actual scene from the episode. This, you know, I, I love it when anime companies do this. They take a scene from an episode, redraw, you know, make it look a whole lot better, and put it for the um for the DVD cover. I love that. But yeah, this was crazy. Uh, the Xeon pilot actually shot at him and he dodged it. Two shots, if I'm not mistaken. And here's the reversible cover image. As you can see, these are made for ground combat, not space combat at all. Here we go. I love this one right here. Bam. This didn't happen. I mean, it probably did within the whole UC timeline, but this didn't happen in the series. Char messing up a, a ground gem. This was the final volume. This was like a side mini story of uh, Gundam. Oh, what is the reversible cover? Oh, yeah. The main character and the female Xeon enemy pilot that he fell in love with. That's that. And, of course, I have, bam, Miller's Report. This one is real. I bet a lot of Gundam fans do not have this. Some, you know, a lot probably do, but... I've never come across anyone that has the same um, DVD. And that's the OF team. Now, on to the next timeline. Mobile Suit Gundam 0080. Now, I never judge a book by his cover, but I know. Looking at this, it's like, uh, you know, you got the little kids on the front. And, you, I mean, what the hell? Believe it or not, she's a Gundam pilot. He pilots a Zaku. She pops the Gundam Alex right here. Um, that's the Gundam Alex. Yeah, it has a reversible cover. I'm not too crazy about their art style at all. No, not at all. But this one, this was cool. This was a short mini series. Uh, I mean, God, and to me, I'm sorry. This had this in One Piece has one of the worst openings ever. I mean, ever song. Uh, uh. The what it shows, God, and that goes to show I'm not a fan. Well, I keep it real and honest. I love Gundam, love it, but I keep it real. And this this intro is just horrendous. Oh, oh no! It, it the ending was better, you know. It was better, and it was interesting that the Alex Gundam was meant for armor, but uh, Chris, her nickname, you know, she ends up getting it. Okay, that's that. Now on to that was 0080. Let's go on to 0083, one of my favorite UC um, timeline series. This one, I love. This was the first time in a whole Gundam franchise or series where a Gundam was stolen. This Gundam right here, I call it Nuclear Gundam, was stolen. And, uh, yeah, stolen by him. Anavogato. Gato. Oh yeah, here's the uh, you know it has reversible cover also on this one, but this, this here's the image right here. I like that DVD art cover. Oh, it's the same as this. Damn. You have Cole Rocky, Keith. Ah, oh, I think I forgot her name. Nina. I think that's her name. Now for volume two. This one, I remember that episode. That high energy beam was man messing that Gundam up but according to her when she kept she had to shoot him a good amount of times and she was like damn your armor you have to go matter of fact it was her yeah her and I'm and I'm gonna tell you something this is another reason I love Gundam and I respect it what's the reversible cover oh yeah he's fighting that mobile armor I mean this came out I wonder it come out Let's say oh one but this um 
this artwork and animation to me was ahead of its time it really was this was a good one both Gundams fighting for the first time ever in a Gundam history timeline as far as the story goes and with this happening yeah right there beautiful both Gundams duking it out a veteran against a rookie you know but yeah the artwork animation was ahead of its time and you could really really tell within this series this was his new final uh, Gundam the main character had and that was the mobile armor Gato acquired and it was such a shame that the Federation had a Gundam stolen it was never recorded in the Federation um, archive never but Nina, she displays true, hollow, uh, you know, hollow colors. Because she, oh man, I'm not going to split it, but she does some dumb hollow things. Alright, on to Zeta Gundam. Now, I haven't finished this series yet. I haven't finished the series yet. I'm going to continue to get these. You know, they come with the double discs. There's Camilla and the Zeta Gundam. No, Char, yes, that is Char. It comes with 10 episodes, 5 on each disc. I do have to finish this. I'm going to have to finish this up offline. You know? So, shame on me if you want to say it. Shame on me. Okay. On to... Let's see here. Oops. All right. Char's counterattack. Yes. This right here is one of my all time favorite anime movies. I mean, this was the conclusion. Look, look at that. This was the conclusion between Armoro and Char. Oh, one thing you guys should notice by now. No offense to people who have it like this, but notice, none of my Gundam DVD says Anime Legends. Anime Legends are like the equivalent to like PlayStation's Greatest Hits or Xbox Platinum Hits, which means I got these when they first came out back then, years ago. You know, I was on top of, on top of, on top of it. I mean, none of these say Anime Legends. These are just the real deal, just legit, just how they are. Um, same thing with this Charles Connor attack. I mean, I, and I love this. I know that looks confusing, but look, side three, side four. Yeah, I, I know your brain is racking right now. I know, especially if you're not into Gundam, it's probably like, what the hell? See, it goes over the timeline. 0079 is when it first started. 0080, I just showed you that one. 0081, and then 0082, ah, 0083. That's when the Gundam got stolen. It goes all the way up to 0086, 0087, 88, 89, 90, 91, da, 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 da. All the way up to see it, man. This is one of my favorite mobile suits in the UC, uh, UC um, era, right here. Now, Gune, he's a dog-ass pilot. He's a uh, cyber new type, as a matter of fact. And that's Char's final mobile suit, the Sasabi. And what's cool, this is actually in Linkin Park's video, Somewhere I Belong. If, if you don't believe me, check it out. I believe Wing Zero and this one right here is in Linkin Park's video. Somewhere I Belong. There it is. That way, they have the color scheme kind of different, but that's it right there. Yep, yep, right there. Quest piloted that thing, couldn't stand that little girl. But Gune, man, he was like Renji and Charles Ibiaku. Huh, but that is, uh, I mean, matter of fact, look at what's in here. I mean, the anime guide. These are the things they're recommending, of course. Escaflone. Fancy Lala. Love him. Look at these old classic animes. Let's look at this. Escaflone, Escaflone. Better Man. Silent Mobius. Ronin Warriors. Arjuna. Classic. Alright. Now it's Charles Connor Attack.
Now, let's go on to Mobile Suit Gundam F91 or 91, the motion picture. Special edition. Now this takes place, if I'm not mistaken, damn, damn, 30 years after Charles Connor attack, I think 60 years or 30 years, damn, all in all, Armour and Char are long gone dead, long gone dead, and the technology that they thought was impressive was, uh, yeah, you know, it, it, it's not about nothing two disc featurettes but originally they wanted to make this into an entire series but they didn't they end up making it into a motion picture and uh, I really wish they would have made this into a series but this is a good one also and of course uh, controversial G Savior the movie Gundam 20th anniversary project this was the Gundam movie the live live action movie with real actors as you can see uh and the ironic thing is damn near the whole cast were the voiceovers of uh they did the voiceovers for um the gundam wing um, um characters you know this oh man i know some would someone even count this as canon someone's uh about the time I scooped it up. It was, you know, it was, it was, you know, it was meh. You know, that's about it. All right, and that is with that. Now, we're going into 16 minutes with this. This is part one. I'm going to get started on part two. This is the Elite Ace. I'm signing off for now. Thanks for watching.